Dr. Rick dropping that on you. Another segment of Riding with Rick. This one uh, is going to be uh, somewhat like the last one, a little bit more intense and descriptive, uh, but absolutely necessary. Uh, those of you who have followed me for any time know that I am uh, heavily involved in providing resources within the black community, not only in my area of expertise, which is psychology, therapy, development, personal development, kids programs. Uh, I do that heavily. Uh, and I have, for the most part, uh, over 95% financed uh, and basically funded my own. Uh, those who have contributed, I definitely appreciate that, but I've been doing that. Uh, in recent years, I've been telling you guys that there is a spike in the need for uh, mental health services, spike in the need for balance, um, and there's been very little support for it, uh, but I've continued on at the level I can to the point to where it has actually become uh, more than uncomfortable for me uh, to do so, but I continue to do so at the rate that I actually can. Here's the problem with that. The list of people who need services is growing to a point that it's more than concerning. And I'm just talking about the people that personally I've placed on a list because I know they need help. And now here's the thing, I wanna clarify this because people will start saying I'm holding people hostage and they're all mental health. You know, it's always the negative people wanna come in that never wanna to contribute to anything. I never turn down anyone in crisis. So if someone brings something to me and they're having suicidal ideation, someone brings something to me and they've had a psychotic break, I'm gonna deal with the uh, immediate issue, the emergency issue, but let me explain something to you. One session, two sessions, it's not gonna change. Anybody's at a point of psychotic break, of a psychotic break, anybody's at the point where they are having suicidal ideations, you can get them to a point where you can consider them to be emotionally stabilized, psychologically stabilized, and they still need so much more work. Here's the thing with that, and I don't think people understand. Well, you're an expert, just do it. Yeah, and I have been, and I haven't charged anyone for these emergency services at all. Here's the problem, these people need ongoing service. Now, uh, let me give you an idea. An average session with me in my professional world for the same thing, an average session with me, I'm not your everyday going therapist. I am one of the best at what I do, not just in my city, on this planet. I have put in the work. I have developed unbelievable uh, focuses and disciplines so that I can approach things from ways the average person didn't. I literally developed an Afrocentric approach to psychology and trauma and therapy that's not gonna be seen in any Eurocentric driven environment. I have black therapists coming to me. Matter of fact, the thing I did on Adverse Childhood Experiences for, uh, that I share with you guys, the video and the pictures and all that, for Adverse Childhood Experiences, that was another therapist that I have the utmost respect for who came to me and said, Doc, you can take this thing places I can, I need you. So I came on board and I will continue to do that for anybody that needs me because this is what we need. But what I'm saying is, if I'm charging somebody $500 that can do this, and, and if other people sitting up saying, $500, I'm not, this ain't for you. You're not paying the $500, not even for you to be worried about. The people that are paying the $500, number one can afford it. It's the target audience that I choose to work with so that I can create a living for myself, for my family, and fund my passion. Uh, but what I'm saying is, for every person I take on long term, every hour I spend with them is five hours, $500 minimum that I can't get. And so my thing is, I have no problem giving the time, but and I'm not asking anybody to pay me $500 out to work with anybody. But what happened is one of the people I used to work with contacted me. Now, this person actually was so desperate to work with me. They came, uh, Some years ago, they went out and they figured out a way to get money to pay me. You know, I didn't know their situation. I didn't know what was going on, but they figured out a way. To, and I worked with them and, you know, did some other things, helped them with the family and some other things. Uh, you don't know who it is, so I can kind of talk about it. Uh, helped them with their son, a whole bunch of other things. This person actually suffers from bipolar disorder and uh, has great moments and has some real bad moments. If you understand bipolar depression, you understand what I'm talking about. 
but this person did good underneath me. This person reached out to me this morning and said, hey, look, you know, I'm going through this point. I'm having a real rough time. Is there any way that, you know, I can work with you? Do you have a scholarship available? And I said, unfortunately, there's no support coming in right now. I actually have a waiting list. I will absolutely put you on the waiting list. And I hate to do this, but it's just simply no resources to do something long term. Now, if it's an emergency, I'm going to jump on it. I, I had two last week people brought to me that were pressing and I made time and I dealt with it. I'm never going to leave somebody out there not knowing what's going to happen to them. But there's long term stuff that needs to be done that we're not doing. And so I actually thought. What about sponsorships? What about scholarships? What about that? What if I met people halfway? What if I said instead of five dollars an hour, if you were to donate five hundred dollars, I would take on a person for a year? Now that's not per session. That's for a year of working with them, uh, providing them with the support they need, and. Uh, getting them support outside of the scope of what I do if necessary. But that's what I'm doing right now. I'm sitting up saying, look, support the mental health elements and components. So I'm gonna have to actually split this up so that I can keep up with anybody who does actually give so that we can start taking the people off this list. Because unfortunately I can't afford to go any deeper than I'm already gone. And if you can't do the mathematics, you don't understand, I'm sorry. I'm not going any deeper to explain that. For every hour that I give away, it doesn't just cost me the hour, it cost me what I could have gotten if I would have just took a business client versus this. And I have no problem giving my time. I would, to be honest, I would rather spend all my time working with my people, but I would go broke real quick. I would, you know, die broke, have to raise money to bear because I couldn't even afford to pay my insurance and a whole bunch of other stuff. I've watched that happen to too many of our, uh, our ancestors. No, I'm not doing that one. But what I will do is I'll take a big bite and create a system and a program to work with people and hopefully create an environment to where we can bring in more professionals who are willing to do the same thing and we can make this a national network the same way I'm trying to make black men lead a national network. We can't keep playing small and our problems are so huge. We have an increased spike, I've been talking about this lately, in suicide in a number of different uh, units of analysis or group subgroups. Black men ages 14 to uh, 24, a 49 cent spike over the last six years. Uh, young black single mothers, a spike. Still looking for the complete data on that, so I don't want to misquote it. But I can tell you that black women, women are more likely to suffer from depression than men, while men are more likely to commit suicide. But black women are the most likely to be depressed out of the out of the women out of the uh, female subgroup. So when it comes to women, black women are the most likely to be depressed, and also out of that same subgroup, the least likely to actually get help and take action to change their situation. We need to work on that. All right, here's the one that's real scary: females, age group five to thirteen. We are in the first spot, number one in suicides. Baby girls, five to thirteen. That's a problem. I've been, I've been, I've been, too, I've been screaming at the top of my lungs. I've been blowing the horn. I've been doing everything I can, sounding the clarion, and it's like we're just in a uh, what Dr. Cleo Monago, Monago uh, calls uh, a trauma trance. We're just like happily moving on, doing nothing. Just happily moving on, doing nothing. And uh, pretending that everything is okay. Socioeconomically, we're in last place. The, uh, the uh, racial, racial wealth gap is widening. Uh, we make up 40%, almost 40% of the prison population, while we only make up 6%. Uh, and me, I'm talking about black men, make up 40% of the prison population, while we... Uh, we only make up six percent of the total population, and now there's become there's a start there's a strong spike in incarcerating of black females. Uh, 
that's a problem. Black men are the most underemployed and unemployed group out there. And the narrative is being pushed that we don't want to work. That's not the case. There are lazy, don't want to work people in every racial group. There are more white people on government assistance than there are black. Of course, there are more white people. But the idea that people are lazy just because they're black or that there's something about black men that makes them know. The thing is, the opportunities are not the same. And if we keep pretending that they are, we keep uh, giving to this image and this notion and this narrative that we're playing on an equal playing field. I'm not here to offer excuses. It's up to us to change it. We can sit on point fingers all day, but that's something that needs to be needs to be changed. We need to leverage some of the things that they offer, some of the things that um, are out there. We need to go out and create our own opportunities. There's nothing more liberating than taking the responsibility of changing your situation. Nothing. The problem is most of us aren't willing to do that. Most of us are willing to sit up and point fingers and blame everyone else for what's going on versus sitting up and saying, you know what, they are doing that. They are literally doing that, but I'm not going to be a victim. I'm not going to sit around and let them do this to me, to my family, to the future uh, offspring that are coming from my loins. That this, that, no, this is not going to be the story. This is not going to be my legacy. This is not going to be the way that it ends. I'm going to contribute. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to do something different. Again, there's so much work. At, look, 26 books, literally more than 2,000 academic articles uh, written on all the things I've discovered. I've lectured on everything from epigenetics in uh, transmit, generational transmission of trauma to epigenetics in cancer to epigenetics in adverse childhood experiences. I have written on it. I have lectured on uh, intimate partner violence, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. I've written on it extensively, the miseducation of black youth in America, academic apartheid. I've done all these things. I'm telling you there are solutions, but they're not going to happen with us sitting up pointing our fingers. They're going to happen with us sitting up saying it's time to start building. It's time to start getting behind the people who have the knowledge, the people who have the expertise, the people who have the energy and the will and the desire to go out there and do, let's just be honest, what most aren't. And that's okay. If you're not that person, if you're not built that way to get out there and get in that grind, put a target on your back in some instances, it's okay. You don't have to be, but you need to be involved. You need to be willing to support the ones who do. So I'm, I'm challenging you. Look, it's time to start supporting the work we're doing. So again, I am going to have, uh, uh, I'm going to have links to where you can literally support, um, the Black Man Lead, right? A passage initiative, which is definitely necessary now so that we can develop strong black men and we can address this proclivity towards violence and criminality and incarceration. But I'm also going to put a link in there for, that you can sponsor a, specifically, we've got a problem with women. The black, If we get Black Man Lead covered, our men are covered in the total of the wraparound services that we offer in that program. So everything that a man could need, we cover in black men leave. What we're missing is in the need to help black women heal. Uh, childhood sexual abuse, incest, uh, domestic violence, uh, mental health disorders, depression, bipolar disorder are main ones. Uh, and so we really and truly do need support in that area. If you sponsor a person, like I said, $500 will get one person covered for a year and I will ensure that they get the services they need. More than likely, I will pro be providing them. So they will get uh, the care from one of the leading um, life change strategists and performance psychologists and trauma, trauma therapists on the planet. And I'm not saying that arrogantly, I'm saying that because I know what I put in and I know those in my field and the hours they put in and I know what I'm capable of. I know what my results are. I know that I have a 99.7% success rate. I haven't had one person, I haven't lost one person, uh, knock on wood, I haven't lost one person to suicide, uh, which as long as I've been dealing with it is, is unbelievable. Oh man, it's scary though. I had this one kid that I've been working with um, on the East Coast 
Um, got him when he was young, 17. Uh, he's a college kid now, and we're still fighting. And you know, it's an up and down, up and hill battle. This stuff is real. Uh, now, fortunately, his mom could afford him, so his mom is taking care of him. He he's getting the full, full. I mean, it, it, stuff's coming from everywhere, and we're still doing everything we can to keep his head above water. So imagine for the kids that don't have these resources or the people that they're going to aren't equipped to deal with them. I'm telling you now, these these white therapists, these this, the Eurocentric idea of psychology does not fit the black experience. And if it doesn't fit the experience, it cannot be as efficacious as it needs to be to provide the type of growth and healing and recovery that's necessary. It simply cannot. And then most of the black people are still operating from the Eurocentric paradigm behind what's, uh, what, what is supposedly psychology for blacks. And it's the same thing. It's just being done by the black person. Now, the idea that a black person is there and may have a better relation uh, in understanding and a better frame of reference for understanding helps. But we need to literally be framing these things by the experiences that are unique to us because they have an influence on where we are. And so that's my challenge. We've got work to do. And so I'm challenging you. Support what we're doing. Sponsor a person. Sponsor two. Uh, but we need to change the narrative. And I'm going to be pushing for this because the, 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 the sincerity in her voice, and I'm telling you, this is a very beautiful woman. She has a great heart, but I've seen her on both ends. I've seen her manic and I've seen her depressed and and uh, I've had her family contact me when she's come off her meds and it's amazing what can happen. And we, we've gotten so used to, we, we, we got uncles we just pushed to the side. Matter of fact, it's almost like a uh, a little side joke, you know, there's always this uncle. Do you realize that if you have a person in your family that's diagnosed with a mental disorder, that it actually counts as an adverse childhood experience for your child? It is. It's one of the 10 prevalent adverse childhood experiences. And yet we got uncle, whatever, cousin, whatever running around. And they just, you know, we just kind of figure out, hey, that's who it is. We never thought about the fact that there's a better life for them if we invest in them. We, we didn't. Well, it's time that we do. So I'm challenging you. Stop sitting around thinking that this is what's going to correct and fix itself. That they are going to all of a sudden one day say, you know, we really did a number on them. We probably should get them some help. Do you really think that's going to happen? Not when they benefit. From, even the people that feel like what happens, what has happened to us and what is happening to us is wrong. They still benefit from it. They still have a privilege that they're not willing to sacrifice. They're not willing to go to the mat for change because they know what that means for them. So that means we have to be the change. So on that note, look, I'm out of here. I am asking you to support. I'm asking you to give. I'm asking you to give. Uh, in a way that's significant enough that we can start pulling these people off this list. Uh, that's my challenge. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.